Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought's Legendary Encounters. Today we have the two ships which have a forward firing armament. We get the French Richelieu and the British Nelson class. Now based off of how these ships were designed slash when they were designed, I'm thinking that the Richelieu is going to have some advantage, but the British ship has bigger guns. Let me show you around. I'm not entirely happy with how the Richelieu turned out. Um, she's supposed to have, I think, this superstructure part, or at least this, I don't know what to call that, that upper hull part. It's supposed to be further forward. I couldn't get that done. Um, I had this turret all the way over there. Um, even then, you still have a very big aft weight offset, which is interesting considering I got nothing on the aft except a couple of triple secondary six inch. Um, you cannot move this thing further forward, and this is the only useful hull that I could find. The modern battleship 2, limited at 45,000 tons, which is actually a little over the displacement that the Richelieu is supposed to have. The modern battleship is too big, the experimental battleship is too narrow, and the super battleship is way too big. The modernized dreadnought doesn't fit. It's not the right type of hull, because it doesn't allow for this forward firing turret over there. Um, and basically having no turrets on the stern. The superstructure also is... Hmm, I think this is the, the, well, the most fitting one. This is uh, Light Modern Tower 3. The other ones, they just had too much fluff on top of it. Uh, oh, I put on two funnels. There we go, aft weight offset is 5.4. It's not as bad. The secondary tower is also not stellar, but this is really the only way that I could fit in these 6-inch guns. Now on screen there will be various pictures flashing by of the Richelieu as she was actually built, or at least as she was in real life. Um, you're going to see some differences there, and well, there are potentially better ways to get this thing done. But with the secondary tower, I think the light secondary tower 1 was really the best one. The light secondary tower 2 doesn't really give you much more in the sense of room for the 6-inch guns. And, um, well, this is what we ended up with. She was supposed to have an additional two 6-inch turrets here, towards the bows, which would have given her a very nice amount of protection against destroyers, light cruisers and such. Um, but sadly, these were never installed, so instead she got a couple of 4-inch um, guns. Oh, sorry, these are not supposed to be triples, these are supposed to be doubles. These were supposed to be 4-inch doubles. Uh, a total of 6 of them, like that. Because she had 12 4-inch guns, or 100mm guns, as a secondary armament against anti-air. Or, well, for anti-air. Considering that she was quite advanced, I'm giving her Krupp 4, Barbette 3, Anti-Torp 2, a single bottom hull, uh, Reinforced Bulkheads 1, Anti-Flood 2, and she had an all-or-nothing armor scheme which you kind of inherited off of the Dunkirk class of battleship, because these were the next best thing. As for rate of fire, uh, we're looking at 1.66 rounds a minute at 15 inch guns. She has a total of eight of those. Now the Nelson, as you will see in a moment, is gonna have more firepower. She's gonna have nine guns of 16 inch, but this ship is potentially slightly better at getting the range right. Because after an upgrade, the Richelieu received a radar rangefinder. The Nelson did not, at least not from what I was able to find online. Her main belt, 12.9. Um, I gave her quite a bit of four belt armor to sort of balance out the ship. Um, it's not necessarily going to be the right option here. But if I put this to 7 inch, she's going to have a very serious aft weight offset, which I don't want. I want to try and sort of balance that out. Her turrets are protected by 17 inches of armor as well as 7.7 .7 topside. The ship can maneuver at 32 knots, which is a lot faster than Nelson. Let's have a look at Nelson. Uh, the Nelson 2, I'm not exactly happy about how the ship turned out, especially the superstructure. We need a different tower for this type of ship. Because the Nelson, as you're going to see from the pictures on the screen, 
she didn't have all of this, well, this, this huge hat, if you will. Um, it was much more of a apartment building or um, what was the right term? Oh yes, Queen Anne's mansions due to the similarity to a 14-story brick residential development opposite St. James's Tube Station in London. So says Wikipedia. Um, none of these really look like a 14-story building to me. I don't know what tower to pick, uh, so this was kind of the best option. This is again something that I would very much like the Dreadnoughts designers to look into, because neither the main tower nor the secondary tower really did what I wanted them to do. The ship, uh, at least in this game, as I said it, is 1940, which is not strictly correct, but she received a couple of upgrades. I think that the rear tower 7 is the least bad option. And again, I don't like having to say that. The other towers are simply too big and don't allow for the deployment of these secondary 6-inch guns that she had over there, as well as the 4-inchers. But the 4-inch secondary guns were supposed to be on the main tower. Now, none of the main towers allow for that, from what I've checked anyway. Um, so you're going to have to get these 4-inch guns here as secondaries beside the main tower, as opposed to on top of it. The ship is fairly slow. 23 knots, but she has a lot of firepower. Now, considering both of these ships are going to be under AI control, it's going to be anybody's guess how well they can make use of that. Because the ship's going to have to be sailing at an angle, something like this, in order to bring all of those guns to bear. She has Mark III 16-inch guns, which I think are too advanced, but I'll allow it in this case, because this is going to make it at least competitive against the Richelieu class. As for the rest, um, anti-torpedo or anti-torpedo two torpedo protection, Citadel five. She also had an all-or-nothing scheme, and she also had a lot of sloped armor um, that is very difficult to signify in this game. So I gave her, just like the Richelieu, a pretty heavy four belt. And considering we still have a bit of displacement left, let's improve that even more because the Richelieu had that fourteen-inch monstrous belt. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to work out very well, but we'll see. She's going to have 12 inch, 9.5 inch aft belt, 6.3 main, 3.8 on the fore and aft deck, 2 inch on the superstructure, 14 on the tower, and her turrets are slightly less protected than those of the Richelieu at 16 inch. She has no radar. She does have stereoscopic 4 rangefinder. You could argue this might have been 3. But um, with this, again, I'm hoping to keep the ship somewhat competitive against the Richelieu. As for reload, uh, she had a reload of 1.3 rounds um, per salvo, I think. Anyway, um, I'm just going to give her enhanced gun reload to give her a bit more rate of fire. 1.05 rounds a minute rate of fire. Reload, 57 seconds, at which point she outputs these 16-inch guns. Or these 16 shells. Whether she's going to be able to make use of it, I don't know. We'll just have to see what the AI comes up with. Now, the Nelson had a pretty rough underwater surprise, at least for those opposing her. That is the underwater torpedo tube. These are 24 inch torpedoes, and they're not even as big in game as they should have been in real life, because they were 24.5 inch torpedo tubes. That's a hell of a punch. Um, the Richelieu is having a torpedo belt, but a 24-inch torpedo can still be very destructive. Now, I think we're just about ready. Um, if you have any suggestions slash remarks about these ships, then by all means, let me know down below in the comment section what you would think I should change, uh, where I should change it, and I might still make those changes to the unit model for future videos. All right, here we go. I'm going to hand off control of my Richelieu to the AI, and this... If you look at it from the bows on, it looks alright, but this turret is supposed to sit somewhere over there, not there. Or rather, the whole superstructure is supposed to be moved further forward. I don't like the look of this ship. I really don't like how it turned out. But hey-ho, here we are. Let me get a couple of pictures of her before we start to punch holes in her. And there is the Nelson. Already bringing all of her guns to bear. Now, 
This could be a very good opener for Nelson, but she has no radar. Sadly for her. There was a bit of uh, contention about whether the Nelson was able to fire all of her main guns. Uh, and I'm going to be reading from Wikipedia here. Firing trials revealed that the blast of the A and B turrets on forward bearing caused damage to many weather deck fittings and conditions of the, on the mess deck became very uncomfortable. So the way that I'm understanding that, if the A and B turret were forward firing, so firing in line with the direction of travel, um, that caused all sorts of wear and tear on the ship. There was a long-standing rumor that the ships could not fire a full broadside without risk of structural damage. This was disproved during the action against the German battleship Bismarck, where Rodney fired upwards of 40 broadsides, so 380 shells, without major structural integrity damage, uh, except to deck planking and upper deck fittings, although damage to sick bay fittings, partition bulkheads, toilet bowls, <laughs> shit and plumbing in the forecastle were extensive. Virtually every light bulb in the forward section was shattered also. So, um, yeah, the ship had some issues. When the X turret was fired, 30 degrees abaft the beam and elevation of 40 degrees, considerable damage occurred to the two vertically stacked rows of bridge windows. So, yeah, she had some issues here and there with damage to the ship itself. The weather looks pretty terrible, by the way. Seriously. Daytime? Uh, meh. Looks more like dusk. Clear weather? No. <laughs> the skybox really needs to change. Light breeze? Maybe. Alright, we're going to speed the proceedings up a little, because this might take a while. Richelieu has taken some damage. Our accuracy is a mere 5%. Now, for the Richelieu, it is very important, much as the Nelson, to stay in a forward-firing position. Make sure that she can bring those barrels to bear. Otherwise, it's going to be bad news for the Richelieu. 5.9. I remember sailing this thing in World of Warships, and always trying to figure out whether it was a good idea to go with a secondary build. Because... Going with a secondary build in World of Warships meant that these uh, six inches on the stern were more effective. But if your six inches were firing, it meant that you had a problem. Because it meant that something had gotten behind you. Maybe a destroyer would have been sneaking up on you or you were trying to turn around. And especially the second part was definitely a problem. Because if something got to the stern, then that meant that your main guns were effectively useless. So, eventually, usually, as in World of Warships, it's usually the, uh, better to focus on your main armament, not so much your secondaries, although secondary builds were, back in the day, just fun. Back in the day being, um, I mean, I play that a lot, 2017? 2018? Something like that. Anyway, uh, the Nelson has taken some damage, and on top of that... She is making life potentially more difficult for herself by exposing her starboard side. And, well, no, she's still able to fire her guns. Good. Another hit. 15-inch main deck pen. Partial pen only, though. And this is kind of what I was worried about. The Nelson does not really have the accuracy because she doesn't have the radar. Another hit. It's still only partial pens, but the Nelson is starting to expose more of her weaker stern belt than her bow belt. Another hit, secondary engine, or second engine, has taken some damage, and she has nothing to show for it. Oh, the Richelieu, however, has a torpedo incoming, which is all the way over there. That's not going to be a problem. These torpedoes have a lot of range, but I gave them absolutely no bonuses otherwise. So they have 16 kilometer range, but they're not terribly quick at 52.6 knots. So that means that they're not likely to do that much. Except in closer encounters. 
Now the Nelson has a pretty good chance to pen the superstructure and lower belt of this ship that I show you. But in reverse... Well, it's not that bad. It's fairly even. 19.3 from Richelieu to Nelson. 10.3. Actually, that's 50% better. No, it's 100% better. Twice as good. Nelson, you really don't want to be relying on your stern guns to take a fight with the Richelieu. You really, really, really don't. She's firing over her shoulder. Potentially much more than she should be able to. But the Richelieu... It, oh, no, she did get the shots off. I thought that she was too far behind it, but no. Turning circle, 365. That's very respectable for a battleship. Not that she's going to need it. Richelieu is ever so gently turning to starboard. Still maintaining firepower with her 15s and some of her 6s as well. Although I kind of doubt that the 6 inches... Yeah... They barely did anything useful. We're getting some hits on Richelieu right now. A couple of the 16-inch hits from the Nelson have managed to find the target. Chance to pen. 6%? I probably gave the Richelieu far too much frontal armor. Ooh, destroyed the main tower. Say bye-bye to your accuracy. My poor Nelson, because this is going to be rough. Another salvo out. 5.9% chance to hit. 18% from Richelieu. It's a lot more accuracy on a ship that has smaller guns, but a higher rate of fire. They reload in 36 seconds. Which, again, I'm not fully convinced is historical. And the ship has more speed. So she's able to dictate the encounter. And, unless Nelson turns, might be able to slip in behind the Nelson, where she only has her 6-inch guns. Come on, Nelson. Do some damage. Both ships are fairly broadside, leading to an accurate... Uh, sorry, to a pen chance from Richelieu to Nelson of almost 50%. In reverse, not so much, because the Richelieu is heavily angled making it very difficult for the shells from Nelson to actually do anything useful. Nelson tries to turn away again. I think I overbuffed Richelieu with that nose. 14 frontal armor? No, it's not right. Although, actually, uh, as I'm reading here from Wikipedia, the ship's belt, belt armor, was 327 millimeters amidships. Where it covered machinery spaces and ammunition magazines. It was capped on either end by transverse bulkheads that were 355 millimeters or 14 inches thick forward and 233 millimeters or four, uh, 19, sorry, 9.2 inches aft. The belt was inclined at 15, 15 degrees, I think, from the vertical to increase its effectiveness against long range fire. So it was sort of angled armor like that. So the 14 inch armor. It is supposed to work. But we have this little thing called quality in this game. Meaning that in this case, you're not looking really at 14 inch armor, you're looking at double. So effectively, the Richelieu has 28 inches of frontal armor for belt armor. But the guns on the Nelson don't get a magical doubling to armor pen chance. Or armor pen. Leading to issues with balancing these things out. That's a problem. Oh, and Nelson also has a slightly lower quality of armor at Krupp 3, because she's an older design. Relative to Richelieu, which has Krupp 4. I think the poor Nelson is just getting demolished by the Richelieu, which has taken some damage, but really nothing noteworthy. The Richelieu, however, has a pretty poor chance to hit, or just to pen. If she would switch to high explosive, she would probably get a lot more damage done. But everything just ricochets off of the armor belt of the Nelson. Nah. 
Another bit of damage. Nelson is still trying to deal damage against Richelieu. He's still getting some percentages, but not nearly as much as the damage that Nelson has taken. Well, Nelson's pretty blackened with impacts from all over. 90% on Richelieu. She's done 1600 damage, but taken almost a fifth of that. It's not nearly as bad for the Richelieu. Nelson's chance to pen is going up, though. But the problem is, she cannot really... Or is not really turning. If Nelson goes bow in, she might have a lot better chance of sustaining more hits. Despite her weaker armor quality, she can still get quite a bit of damage done to the ship while potentially taking less damage. But I'm probably gonna have to test, test that out myself, as I'll take control of the losing ship, which most likely will be Nelson, and see if I can defeat the Richelieu myself. Our 16s are just not firing. They're at a terrible angle. And sadly, the AI is pretty clueless. But <laughs> the AI and the Richelieu is similarly clueless. Because it's hell-bent on firing armor-piercing at a very angled target. It has a high chance of ricocheting. Doink. That was another 8 15-inch shells. Let's see if I can catch that. I just ricochet off of the belt. Here it comes. Here are the shells. Watch this. Boom. Everything ricocheted. You can see a couple of them here, here, here. They're all ricocheting off the side of the ship. If that would have been high explosive, the Nelson would have been hurting. So Richelieu has taken up a nice position behind the Nelson, but is... Well, that was impressive. But is mostly unable to deal damage. Although somehow... I think they might have found... The turret roof? Main gun pen. Interesting. So the Nelson just lost her... What I think is referred to as X turret there. The thing is... Richelieu might have some very good accuracy. But if she maintains her positioning... I think she's not really going to be able to get the kill here. Because she won't have enough ammo. Flooding, though. On the stern of the Nelson. The Nelson has maximum bulkheads. And is very swift at getting that uh, flooding under control. This is kind of what I was worried about with the Richelieu. She's going to sneak up behind you. And unless Nelson turns, which she can, but she's just not doing it. She's going to get taken apart. Oh. Right off the belt. Uh, these six inch guns are fairly useless. They've done absolutely no damage. Nothing. Yeah. They've set uh, three fires, but that's it. More flooding. Looks like the Nelson's stern armor is starting to fail. Richelieu has a 16% chance to pen. Uh, if Nelson could fire back at Richelieu, she has a vastly better chance of doing damage. And it looks like Richelieu might be overextending to the wrong side of the ship. You can see the A and B turret turning on the Nelson. And there you go. Richelieu overextended. She should have parked behind the Nelson, but she didn't. And now she has a 50% chance to get penned with every salvo from these 16-inch guns, which at this range don't need radar. And she has a problem potentially with a torpedo. That is, if they're still functional. Oh, but Richelieu is coming along the side, increasing her chance to pen as well. This is going to get an interesting duel. 60% chance to hit. And that bounced? Did that ricochet off of the Richelieu? 50%. Torpedo launcher still holding. The Nelson is getting picked clean by the Richelieu. Far more floodings. And that bounced off of the side? How though? 
Ooh. Poor Nelson. Richelieu has 76 shells left. Depending on how many pens she's going to get, that might or might not be enough. Richelieu is... What are you doing? <laughs> is she going to try and ram? <laughs> That'd be nice. Oh, this battle has been lasting an hour. That's pretty long for these battles. Nelson has plenty of ammo. Richelieu does not. Nelson does not have a lot of health left. I think her st her portside torpedo launcher has been destroyed, but I find it very hard to see that on the damage model. Oof. 8% structural integrity left for the Nelson. 52 shells on Richelieu. But she's going to probably win this fight. Unless she really fucks up, but I don't think she will. Boom. 3% structural, buoyancy dropping to 30%. Oh! 516 damage. That was a couple of good hits from the 16-inch guns. Secondary tower pen, main belt pen, and another main belt pen. Richelieu is flooding. And Nelson has def been defeated by Richelieu. Richelieu still has plenty of structural integrity left. Okay. That was not great. <laughs> now, the Nelson is quite a bit lighter than the Richelieu and older. Let's see if I can do better. We're going to switch to the British. You're going to switch to the French. Design the ships. I will take the Nelson and the AI will take the Richelieu. Crew training regular, yes. Training regular, yes. Let's go. Let's see if I can do better. Target's over there. We're going to go bow in. And we're probably not going to be hitting anything at this range anyway. I'm going to go to full speed to get a bit better accuracy. I'm hoping that the Richelieu is going to continue to close. Because that's what I need her to do. At long range, she has the advantage. At short range, especially with a human troll, I might have a better chance than the Richelieu. It's really going to depend on how she's going to sail that ship. Weather conditions, pretty similar. At this range, I'm hoping to get deck pens against the Richelieu, because I think that's the only chance that I currently have. Lest I fire high explosive. Oof! That's not great. There goes my funnel. Yeah, the shells are landing far and wide, but definitely not on top of the target. I'm going to keep the torpedo tubes as a reserve. As a surprise attack. Range 15-6. She's not closing, though. She's just kind of sailing... Yeah. She seems to be turning slightly to port. We got one aft partial pen. Accuracy going up to 7.4. Not too bad, not too bad. Target fast speed, yeah. That's a problem. The Nelsons were not fast. 23 knots top speed. But considering I get a bonus when I'm at full speed, that's what I'm doing. Uh, target cruise speed, plus 23.4% accuracy. Switch to high explosive. I need this thing to come closer, not sail further away. Richelieu, turn in. Whoa, what happened to your 6 inch? That thing looks terrible. The shell landed right on top of it. It seems like the turret might be offline, but I'm not sure. Oh, come on, stop sailing away. Although, if I turn to port, I might end up behind the Richelieu. I'll just never be able to keep up with her. That's the problem that the Nelson has. Positioning is very tough. 
11% chance to hit. <laughs> Sorry, to pen. Good lord. Yeah, we're definitely gonna need the high explosive here. Yep, that partially penned it. But it largely did nothing. Chance to pen me? 22%. That's good. Richelieu, with her fewer guns, also gets fewer ammunition. I have 800 shells, she has 600. I can keep this up for a while. 9% chance to hit. Yep, there you go. 16 inch shells landing on the deck of the Richelieu. And I'm trying to keep the ship angled enough to bring all of my turrets to bear. Ow. 15 inch return fire. Come on, we're gonna zigzag a little. Although, to be fair, uh, 38,000 tons does not zigzag very well. 94, 87. Currently, Richelieu is winning. And getting away from me. That's not what I want her to do. At all. I want her to stay close. She's just not doing that. Another hit. Barely any damage. 540 shells left on Richelieu. Missed. 14.8. Another bit of damage. She's lobbing AP at me, sometimes getting a partial pen. I'm lobbing HE at her, also sometimes getting a partial pen. But I think I overall, with my hits, do more damage. More consistent. I say, as I partial pen her and she gets a full... Full pen? No, partial pen on me. Come on. There you go. She's still 14.7 kilometers out. What's her speed? 30 knots. Uh huh. I'm suffering from some damage instability, but it's not terrible. It's minus 1%. And then suddenly it went to minus 3%. Target fast speed is still minus 37. Now, fire damage against these ships is really not that important. Because with these bulkheads that both of these ships have, they're very quick to put out the fires. It's 48 damage to me, it's 7 damage to them. It's really not important. Hold on, was that high explosive? Yep, we're now seeing high explosive come in, which is bad news for Nelson. 75% structural on me, 84 on the Richelieu. Once again, on fire. I know I'm not bringing all of my guns to bear, but I don't want to expose too much of the ship. Damn it. Engine out. It's going to slow me down to 16 knots, allowing Richelieu to further dictate the encounter. My accuracy is about 8%. Theirs is a little higher, closer to 9%. Hmm. I'm not sure if I can pull this one off. Ow. 14-3. Only fire damage. A bit more exposed here. But I'm also bringing another three barrels to bear. So I can fire larger salvos. Some damage. I need something critical to be hit on the Richelieu, like the superstructure. It's not very heavily armored. And it should be able to get damaged and thus reducing their accuracy. Oh, two engines out of commission. That's nice. Although, I'm not seeing any effect to that. She might have... There you go. 29.7. She might have too much momentum going for her. At least for now. 29.6. Structural 57 on Nelson. 79 on Richelieu. 77. Richelieu still has 324 shells left. Range? 14.6. I'm definitely not going to have to rely on the torpedo launchers. That's uh, that's a no-go. 
The only thing I can hope is that Richelieu runs out of ammo before I run out of health. But ugh, that's a pretty poor tactic. It's not something I really want to rely on. Are you really unable to get those engines back? Because they're not flooded. Full salvo. 8.2, 9.5. Ouch. <sighs> Still with these engines out. She's very fast. It's like she barely notices. Go on. 7%. Oh, she's getting away. 244 shells on Richelieu. Twenty-seven nine. She's still way faster. <laughs> it looks like I'm not getting my engines back either. Jesus. I wonder what happens if the Richelieu runs out of primary ammo. Is she going to return and try to engage me with her six inch stern guns or secondaries? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Chance to pen less than 10%. Shells are landing all over the place, but not on the ship. Less than 200 shells on Richelieu. Ow. Come on. Work for it, Nelson. You're an older design. You're going to have to work harder against one of these more modern battleships. At least all of my guns are still functional. My main uh, tower is still functional. I'm not dead. I'm just damaged. But that goes for most humans, I suppose. Anyway. Um, 140 shells. Hmm. Opportunities. Because I have 400 shells more. But if the Richelieu is going to retreat, then it's not going to go that well. Because I need her to stay closer. Well, any closing distance is better, but... I like how I knocked out one of her 6-inch guns on the stern. Probably this one. I think this one really got knocked out this time around. Still 24 knots. Actually, it has some fire, but barely any effect. You need to do better. Nothing. Come on, Richelieu. You've got 84 shells left. That's about 10 salvos. Depending on your angle. 76. Turn around, girl. Turn around and come here. Turn around, turn around, turn around. 60 shells. 52. Fire damage. Again, for two damaged engines, this ship still has a ton of speed. It's probably due to her hull form, which is pretty sleek. Making for a very nice and stable, but also fast platform. Which arguably doesn't turn as well. Oh, that was a bit too much angle. A bit too broadside. 20 shells left on Richelieu. She's going to be out of it soon. Twelve. Four. Ooh, that did some damage, though. Last salvo from Richelieu. She's out of ammo. What are you going to do now? Yep. Mistake. She's going to come in, potentially, to bring her secondaries to bear. 
And I think the AI is going to have absolutely no clue on how to do that. Because they're mounted on the stern. Which means that right now, I have a huge advantage over the Richelieu. Because I can just deal damage to her without any concern of getting killed off. The only thing that the Richelieu could still do is ram me. And considering my weaker state, I would probably not survive. 48% structural, if she just scrapes along for long enough. 67%, I would die. The Nelson would sink. 5% chance to pin. But if she's going to come in, then I get a 24-inch surprise waiting for her. It's going to deal quite a lot of damage, potentially. Of course, she has that torpedo blister, which is going to keep her potentially safe. We'll see. We'll see. 11 kilometers out. Accuracy is going up. Although, it could have fooled me, because I'm not getting anything. Come on. 24%. Fire. Wow. Spectacular. 6% chance to pen. Range, 9.9, .9, which means that the 4-inch guns are now going to be useful. Um, Richelieu is trying to fight back with her 6-inch guns. They have just enough clearance off the stern to be able to fire. 7%. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> it's starting to rack up. Richelieu is down to 61%. Range 8.4. Pen chance is going up very quickly now. Load the armor piercing. Because if I can pen that belt, she's going to be hurting. Full salvo out. Flooding. And the third engine's out of commission, and her rudder. Oh, she's angling away again. Get a salvo off fast. Yep, more flooding. Okay, she's too heavily angled. Richelieu really, pardon the pun, fired her load too fast. I might still be able to pen that. It's 33% low ricochet angle. Load armor piercing. Let's see what I can do. Yep. Flooding. Midships. That was right through the main belt. One part or a whole bunch of partials and one main. Full pen. There you go. Her structural integrity is now even with me. 48%. More flooding. Let's send her the good news of a torpedo tube. She might... She's still slowing down. We might not even need the torpedoes at this rate. Because we're just blowing this ship to bits. Structural integrity, 43%. So, Nelson just... Well... Nelson kind of turtled for long enough to be able to take the hits. And now she's dishing it out, and she will win this. Just going to take me a bit of time. Let's see, this torpedo angle. How much do I need? I know this torpedo tube isn't the most... Oh, there we go. Torpedo away. I was going to say the torpedo angle is not the best that we have. But it might be enough. It just cause more flooding on the Richelieu. Although I'm not sure she needs help from a torpedo. The ship really is getting battered. 33%. There you go. 27%. Full armor piercing shells right through the ship. Ooh, you spotted the torpedo. Look at that turning circle! How? 
Did you suddenly spawn a tug? That started pushing this way, or started pushing this way and pulling this way? This is insane! And that's with three damaged engines, and a speed of seven knots. Oh, and thanks to that torpedo, I wasted my own ricochet, or my own um, pen angles. Okay, fine, we're gonna load some high explosive. Because that too will cause some issues. That destroyed. No, that redestroyed the, the secondary gun that we already had. Come on. Open up again. 23%. Rudder's out. Although I've seen the AI do all sorts of maneuvers with the destroyed rudder. 20%. I'm going to try armor piercing, but I don't think it'll work. No, it did work. Another compartment's flooding. 25% chance to pan. Yeah, we got your whole belt. Ideally the stern. More flooding. 50%. We got her. I do like the design of the Richelieu. I mean, not this huge disparity, but overall, it's a fast ship, which I enjoy. It's got these 15-inch guns, which can damage most targets very effectively. And the 6-inch secondaries are usually more than enough to deal with a couple of destroyers. It's a, I'd say, a very versatile ship. Nelson... She's got bigger guns, and she's got that that very distinct bow, but she is slow. I don't like this ship that much. But let me know down below in the comments, which one is your favorite? Nelson or Richelieu? Which one? 7%, her rudder compartment starting to flood. And I still have plenty of salvos and a torpedo tube. Although, with the AI dodging magic, I think that torpedoes are not going to work. 4%, 3%, more flooding. Richelieu is just finished. Completely finished. She might have had that heavily armored angled belt, 14 4 inch, but it's not going to save her now. 2% structural. Bit more, bit more, bit more. One or two salvos and you're done. 0. 0.8. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll do it again. Reload for one last salvo. Dead. So it's a 1-1. A one, one. Nelson won, Richelieu won. It's not really a clear victor. I and mean, if you let the AI control it, yes, it will go the way of the Richelieu. If I control it, it's going to go, go the way of the Nelson. I'm not sure. I think the Nelson's a bit more specific and benefits from player control more, though, more so than the Richelieu. Anyway, a long video. I wasn't expecting this to run for almost 50 minutes, but here we are. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below and I'll see you guys soon for the next legendary encounter.